Hi everyone. I don't I'm not sure. Yep. This is live. Okay. Hi everyone. Ooh. Hello. I'm just going to This is a new This is a new um platform for me. So it's a different way of doing it so hi everyone who's here um hi b and evelyn and darlene hello ladies i'm glad you're here today um thanks a lot for joining me it's uh early afternoon so i've got the light like shining right into my face <laughs> so um i hope you can hear me okay um it's um my connection says it's good so just uh yep i see you i see you hi lisa did i not say airily right i'm mm, sorry um anyway ladies thanks for joining me i think we're gonna have a good time i am organized this afternoon look at this i've got notes because i want to talk about certain things and i want to make sure that i touch on certain things i'm really 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 excited all right i'm so glad okay that's really always a concern because you know we live in the sticks in vermont so i never know but i know that we have a really good connection because we live in the sticks in vermont <laughs> um, i've never really had any issues with it so anyway thank you for joining me today in this uh launch video um I can actually, this is a new platform for me, like, like I said, and I can actually, I know who's messaging me and it's very cool. Um, I'm just trying it out. See which one I like. I like, I like StreamYard. I'm not, it's for, first time I'm using this, so it's exciting. Um, so launching the blessing book two yay last night i had a lot of fun with my uh friends over in uh in my group so if you join me there yay that was a lot of fun um today i want to do kind of the same format but whoops a little bit different you know what sorry about that um i do want to um I want to make sure that everyone knows that yes, there will be door prizes. Um, I am giving away a book paperback for anybody. You know, you'll be entered. Not everyone gets a paperback. I'm sorry. <clears throat> a few comments, you'll be entered into a door prize. Okay. Um, yeah, it'll be fun. So comment or and you know comment a lot, and I will get to you as much as I you know I will get go through the comments because I love interacting. This is my way of chatting with you. And I, I really, I look forward to it. Um, so I have, I just found out, I don't even know how I found out, but today is actual national um, do, uh, canine dog uh, uh, veterans day, which is so cool. And I actually have a lot to talk about uh, with do uh, about the dogs. Hi, Alicia. Yay, thank you. Oh, good. I'm glad you can hear me. Yes, that is so exciting. So today is going to be a little bit more about the dogs and the book, of course. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about dogs. I'm going to share uh, with you a few of the things that I've found. And um, because it's so so amazing what these dots can do and um first of all the blessing is um is book two in the canine uh in wow to protect and serve and yes it takes place in boston most of the time 
actually this this nope we do travel a little bit down to south north carolina to the outer banks which is kind of cool um i haven't been <laughs> but i thought it'd be a nice place to visit you know in a book so um i'm gonna talk about the book i'm gonna answer uh, or talk about like the stuff behind the book first then i'm gonna read dogs are awesome we all know I love my grand dogger who is snoring at my feet right now. She is, uh, oops. Um, so German Shepherds, this book, uh, the canine in this book is a German Shepherd and, um, they are just fierce. They are intelligent. They are driven. They are a little crazy. Um, and, um, raven is um she has some german tendencies like i'll show you a video and i'm like oh i recognize that wine <laughs> so i so the outer banks when i traveled there i was able to do it on um google earth and it was beautiful and i'm like husband can we go to the outer banks so <laughs> i don't think that's in the in the plans for anytime soon um ah, yes oh i'm so jealous i think they're beautiful dogs they're so driven um and um well i mean so somebody actually it was leisha <laughs> who asked yesterday last night where so my dog in this um book is his name is akko and that's an actual name of, of a german shepherd that i actually knew growing up um a friend of ours, a friend of mine um, in Dubai, where when we lived in Dubai, uh, they came from Germany and our friend had a German Shepherd. <laughs> now, he was insane. He was actually a crazy dog. Uh, and at the time we had um, a, uh, a dog named Snoopy, who was just a mutt from... A local mutt, but he was beautiful. He looked uh, he looked a little bit like an Irish setter cross. He had the silky um, ears and the coloring. He was really pretty dog. So Akko and Snoopy were best friends. And um, Akko's um, owner and I, we used to take our dogs <laughs> on walks at night. And yes, he was insane, but he was a really really sweet dog when he wasn't being insane um so that's kind of where that name came from i hope that answers your question Nisha. and uh oh wrong one why is this sorry hi yeah diane yes that is so cool i think well our um canine uh, our department locally and i actually met, met this dog and i was just like oh <gasps> Uh, they employ uh, or they d uh, deploy actually a uh, German Shepherd as well. And she's actually one of the only female working dogs. Hi, Kristen. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to try and get it right. And here's Diane. Thanks for joining me, Diane. Us all. Um, so, so our, uh, our, our, our Springfield town does have a canine unit, or it did. I don't know, before COVID. I don't know if things have changed. Um, they deploy a German Shepherd. She's a female, and she is actually owned by her handler, and I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, so when usually when a handler is paired uh, or is accepted to uh, the canine training program, they are paired with a canine that is already either been trained or has already done you know is is in need of a, a new um is in need of a new own uh handler um it's probably because there's so much to learn <laughs> and so i learned a little bit about that and i i was like well you know shane's not your everyday run-of-the-mill kind of guy and some of the handlers will actually purchase their own dogs and this guy in Springfield he did purchase his own dog and the the um, handler that I'm going to share with you also purchased his own dog 
why did they do that? Because they had the experience and they also had, um, they probably had the funds. They are not cheap. An average um, canine goes for like 15,000. That's probably the cheapest. And then you have to outfit them. Um, the cars, the equipment, it's expensive. It's, it's, that's why, you know, it's, it's very expensive. If you ever feel like giving to your local police department, it would be, and they have a canine department. You might want to see <laughs> if they require anything. Um, uh, the reason why they purchase their own dogs is so they can, they have more control over what happens with them. Um, this uh, canine in Springfield, I know that the owner or the handler can say, okay, she's had enough. She's going to retire or um, yeah, that's enough for us. She's done. Um, this um, canine that I'm going to introduce you to in a minute, Mattis, his owner decided to uh, retire him after six years, I believe um, on the force. And because he saw that Mattis was not um, had a bit of a uh, limp in his back leg. And so he could determine that on his own. Uh, and so he now lives with um, his handler like he always did. Okay, the canine dogs, do they live with their handlers or not? Yes, they do live with their handlers. Some keep them in the kennels. Um, others, they come into the house and you'll see, you know, whatever happens, happens. <laughs> um Okay, here we go. Aqua is a very unique name. It is pretty. Thank you so much for answering my question. You thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, I always wanted to name one of my characters after a friend of mine. I have done that. Wait. <laughs> All right. So um, I think. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, guys, as I'm reading, I'm gonna start reading to you in a minute. Um. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. No, I'm going to share some really cool videos with you guys. Okay, this is going to be really... Oops. Sorry about that. Um, hmm, how do I do this? I can share. Okay, I know how to share my screen. So sit tight for a second. For an odor challenge. So this Enjoy. one was sent in by a very special follower who had a great idea. That should be really hard for Mattis. I'm gonna put the odor inside a pickle jar and then put it inside a fridge. Inside the bag? Inside the jar. Inside the fridge. Now we let it sit for a little while. All right, I'm gonna start to whiff the odor and off lead so I can't kill Mattis. Find it. Ah! Tell you why he just alerted there because that's where the odor blows out from is the back of the fridge. Here, buddy. Show me where it is. Where is it? Show me where it is. That's a good boy. <laughs> if you have a challenging idea of where, so that was actually that was Mattis who is a uh, who's actually he's one of the two retired canines that i've been kind of stalking following following stalking following no nope, stop i don't stalk anyone on the internet no that would be wrong um mattis has a very very cool story that i'm going to share with you in a second um and as you can see you know this dog is uh the handler shares he's retired um, he retired last year. Um, he is actually a, um, he is a uh, Purple Heart recipient for Valor in his, um, he's the highly de highest decorated officer, officer in his department, which is, oh, he's a dog. Okay. Um, that tells you something. I'm going to share a little bit about his story with you guys so um so that we honor these dogs today because it just happens that it, i did not know trust me i'm usually the last person to know it's a national whatever day um but i had seen it and i'm like wait is that today i saw it yesterday somewhere um i think i know why but anyway um so uh i just want to honor these dogs because you know <sighs> this is about the canine 
the, the book is deals with canines. So if you have any questions, pop them in the comments and I will deal, uh, talk to, uh, talk to you about them, uh, afterwards, uh, share a couple more videos. Um, this is another Mattis. He's just a lot of fun to share about, um, his handler does some fun things on TikTok, so I'm really. Uh, here we go. So this is kind of their backstory, what happened to Mattis, um, uh, when he was, what happened to Mattis, and that um, made it so that he became a Purple Heart recipient, Purple. Yeah, Purple Heart Medal. Here's my reuniting story with Mattis after he got hurt. But that's when Mattis started showing signs that he might be injured. No broken bones, but Mattis had internal bleeding. He was immediately taken in for surgery. The moxie that he has to go after a second guy after doing that, it just shows you the drive and the determination that these guys have and what an invaluable tool they are to law enforcement. <laughs> Do you hear that wine? I hear that wine every morning. <laughs> We're gonna go She's German in that part. Such an amazing feeling, such an amazing job to work with a dog. Nothing like having your best friend as a partner. Can't wait to see this movie. In theaters this weekend, Lincoln Bio. Okay, in honor of the movie. There we go. So, yes. So, Mattis, as I said, Mattis, he was... Um, um, I'm glad you tuned in because this is going to be so much fun. I am so excited about this. Um, so B asked, uh, curious when the canine retired, do they stay with their handler or the family? Yes and no. I mean, it depends on how, if they can be retired with a family. Um, unfortunately some dogs can't, but, um, and yeah, I mean, most of them, their handler would probably take them to uh, have them retire with them, but they also might have another dog from previous service. So um, that makes it a little difficult because most of these dogs, they are not altered. So they're not neutered. They are full canines and they do get into fights with each other. So um <laughs> So yes, it all depends. I but most of them do find a home with their handlers. I think, um, and there are programs. I believe that you can, um, you can um, adopt a retired canine working dog. And I know that my favorite um, author, uh, Ronnie Kendig, she retired. Uh, she um, she adopted her first um, canine like eight years ago and he passed away two years. Uh, and then now she has another one that she just adopted. They are not easy. They are not pets. They are working dogs. So they need to have that transition from working dog to pet. It's, it's not easy oftentimes. So you really have to do a lot of work with these dogs. It's, um, I don't know if you've seen the movie Dog. Uh, my husband and I saw it, and it was very well done, and it really showed that these canine dogs are heroes, and they have a hard time transitioning, just like, you know, veterans sometimes have a hard time transitioning into retired life. So, um, but yeah, that, that's a happy wine I hear that every morning. <laughs> that and the bark. She's got the German Shepherd bark. And that's about all she has. I could, I wish I could show her to you right now, but mm -mm, can't turn my thing around. So let's see what it. Um, did you get a, to see a lot of dog? Uh, you know, that's a great question. I did. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, you, you're you going to love that movie. It's amazing, uh, B. So I did get to see so a, a lot of uh, German Shepherd action. I action. Um, I grew up in a small town. The mayor of our town um, had his training ground for German. He bred uh, and trained German Shepherds and he had the great training ground right next to, on my on the way to my school. So every day I'd go to school, I'd see these dogs. And it was pretty impressive. I was pretty scared of them. Um, and I just remembered that 
my family, um, my parent, my mom is a teacher, was a teacher. She's retired. Uh, and every year, colleagues of her hers would invite us to their house and all the kids of all, this group of friends, all teachers would get together and they would do like a big Easter egg hunt. It was amazing. And they had two German shepherds that were, wow. <laughs> These dogs were not cutesy little petsies. Okay. Uh, in fact, my poor sister, she got bit by one. Um, but yeah, they were intense and they were trained so well. I, I used to I used to have a lot of respect for these dogs and kind of give them a wide berth, you know, because they were not the cutesy, petsy kind of dogs. So yeah, um, I definitely saw some German. And I was just thinking about that. I mean, I'm dog training is is amazing. I, I trained my golden retriever years and years ago. Um to be a canine good citizen and to be uh, doing the agility. So she would jump over the hurdles, climb up the A-frame, go over the seesaw and go through the tunnel. And she did this off leash. And my husband actually won a competition <laughs> and showed me up a little bit because he took her off. Oh no, he took her on leash. That's right. And he got, he beat my time with her because I took her off leash. So that was a little more difficult, but anyway, she was really well trained. I really enjoyed, um, doing the training with her. Um, and I would work with her every hour, every day for about an hour. And this dog would stay in the down position for an hour at a time. If I told her she wouldn't move until I told her and she would not get up. I could leave her outside the store without tying her up. I could tell her to stay. She wouldn't move. Maybe. Well, she would be sad, but she wouldn't move. Um, she was an incredible dog. And so I, and that was just putting an hour in each day. And the bond we had was, it was definitely different than any of the other dogs I've had. Um, yeah. So, um, so these dog, these trainers and handlers, they Ha! No, I am not a dog whisperer. Trust me. Um, I wish I were. <laughs> I have high respect for these handlers who not only do they spend their time during shift with these dogs, but then they have about, they train for an hour. They have to train an hour a day. You know, just they do. And and it's not training like sit dog. You know, it's not rigorous. It's play training. I don't know if you uh, heard it, but uh, when Mark said, oh, I'm, we're going to go home and play. All this stuff, the biting and all that stuff is play for them. So I'm going to show you one more dog that is absolutely incredible. And it's from Instagram. So um, I don't stalk any of these. Not at all. And this is Hurricane. And he is a retired Secret Service vet, uh, dog, actually. And his story is really, wow. Um, I'm going to read it real quick. Uh, he was, and, and he was just awarded uh, a Distinguished Service Medal um, two days ago. And this is his story, and I'm going to read it. October 14th, uh, I'm sorry, in October 2014, Hurricane neutralized an intruder who scaled the White House fence. I think I remember hearing about this. Not, you know, because I don't, yeah, but I remember hearing about this. An initial canine responder, Jar Jarden, first encountered the intruder who violently fought Jarden off and badly in injured the dog. Hurricane also sustained serious injury, but immediately forced the man to the ground, allowing his uniform division colleagues to make an arrest. Um, on every shift, every day, we at the Secret Service strive to uphold the five core value, duty, honor, loyalty, justice, and courage. They are five points of our agency stars, star, and on, on that dark night, in October 2014, they were embodied by a very good boy named Hurricane. I thought, I mean, that is so sweet. I'm not crying. No, it's really, really, really cool. Um, 
great question. So here is Hurricane and Hurricane's heroes. Um, Hurricane is now retired. He looks, he really needed to re retire. And he is, um, he retired with his handler. I don't know what his name is. But the cool thing about Hurricane is, um, or that his handler is because um, a lot of the dogs have issues, health issues that are retired. And what this guy does, or this foundation, he started a foundation. And uh, um, what he does is um, he ensure, or he helps uh, his foundation or their foundation helps pay um, for some of the medical bills uh, for the handlers because it's a lot. Um, it's a whole lot. You know, these handlers take on a lot. Um, yeah. And that's a really cool, that's a great, great, great question. And I, oh, sh 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 not this one. Okay, I'm going to show you the difference between Mattis, a German Shepherd, and I can't find his thing. So this is a Belgian Malinois, okay? Of course I can't. I'm going to share this, this uh, Belgian Malinois with you, um, and I want you to look at how the dog attacks the poor, 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 um, human decoy. And again, this is playtime for them. Okay. And this is a uh, courtesy of, uh, uh, Mattis and Mark. So hold on. Oh, oh he missed. <laughs> Whoops. That's not the one that I wanted to, but do you see how he hurls himself? I got a much better one. I sorry. But he got him on the second round. Didn't give up. Okay, I'm going to share you. This is the one that I was looking for. Okay, hold on. Sorry. This is why I love lives, right? No! Sorry. Why is this not sharing? Stop sharing. Sorry. Sorry about that. <sighs> Not sure. Ah, no, sorry. Anyway, so what I wanted to show kind of was um, the difference between a German Shepherd and a Belgian Mama um, attacking or whatever, going for the for the arm, having fun playing, biting. Um, the German Shepherd, if you noticed how Mattis took down the, the decoy, he ran at the decoy and then jumped at him as he was close. German Shepherds are bigger dogs. They can weigh up to 120 pounds, I think. Um, good questions. I love these questions. Um, so um, German Shepherds are bigger. They are, um, you know, uh, they have, they're, they have more bulk. So they generally don't, can't fly through the air like this uh, Malinois could do. And of course the Malinois is like spectacular as he takes down the, uh, the intruders, you know, it's very cool. It's that wow effect, but uh, trust me, I mean, that poor <laughs> decoy, they're hurting. Um, so, because even through the bite suit, I have not met either. Um, so even through the bite suit, it leaves more, <laughs> it leaves bruises. And so, yeah, that's kind of cool it, or not cool. But so the Malinois the difference is they're more agile and they, it, they go after the prey by jumping through the air. Whereas the, dec uh, the German shepherd will more run at them and then throw themselves at the decoy and knock them down with their strength, you know? So it's very, very interesting and very cool. Um, all right, I'm done sharing with this. Okay, so um, I am going to keep the questions coming. I will answer them after 
after I read. Would you like me to read? I want to see if people want me to read or if I should just forget. <laughs> um, and I'm going to spend as much time with you as I as we can, as we want. I have no time limit. Um, okay, as, as you decide. So I have not met either of them. That'd be really cool. They are definitely my heroes. Um, I just stalk, I mean, I just look for their information on, uh, on the internet and that's all I can. I feel like I, <sighs> cool. I will read. I feel like I, I really would love to meet. I, I mean, I was in awe when I met the uh, German shepherd in the local police department. I was just like standing there going, I don't know if you saw my my <laughs> my uh, post like way back, I think, I don't remember. Like last year in the fall, I saw um, the uh, canine for another department in Vermont, uh, Weathersfield Department. Um, and they use a Belgian Malinois. And I was just, the, the dog was in the car and I was just like, oh, I want to go over there and say, and, and the police. So the really cool thing about these police canines, you know, the handlers, uh, they are used for obviously protection. They're used to, uh, you know, find the bad guys, but the cool thing is, in, and Mark and Mattis, the, the um, black German shepherd, they have done so much to, um, one thing Mark has said, the handler has said is that um, one of the things about Mattis is he's a very personable dog and he seeks people out. And so that there's, you know, if you see a police department, a uh, police officer, you're probably not going to go up to him and talk to him but if you see a police officer with a <coughs> excuse me with a uh, dog you're probably gonna go oh want a pet you know obviously you're not nine times out of ten I would mm, they're probably gonna say um no probably not a good idea um and so but you know they bridge a they 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 bring the community and police department together and and, and I know that Mattis has done that in his department which is real and and usually the canines will do that which is really cool and yes I will uh, <laughs> it was really ridiculous pathetic sadness and I'm sure the uh, police officer would have been like oh yeah sure oh, <laughs> he would have told me all about the dog. I know it, but that's just me being me. And yes, I will read to you. Let me see. There are. Oh, good question. I have no idea. I do not know if which dogs are harder to train. I would. I had a female and she was pretty simple to train, but she was a she was a uh, she was a golden. So, you know, but but German Shepherds are very I think they want they they want to be trained. Uh, Belgian Malinois are called the Malinators. They are stubborner than German Shepherds and less um, easy to train, I've heard. So I don't think it's uh, a matter of uh, female versus male. The males are more aggressive, I would say, toward other males um, because they are not neutered. And I've heard handlers, well, I've seen, okay, so I've watched you know, the service, secret service thing where they, where the uh, handler of uh, the hurricane dog, he showed us some of the background um, on a video. And so, uh, and one of them was the training and every single one of those dogs had a muzzle on. Hmm. I wonder why. And the muzzles are not cruel. They are there for their own protection and they're, they are actually comfortable. And yes. Are they on a strict diet? I, I would I would think so. You want to feed them high energy food so that they can sustain their jobs. You know, um, they probably have uh, supplements that they need for their joints because even sitting in the back of the cars, the cruisers, that is hard on them. And then they have to jump. I mean, what they do is amazing. It's just amazing. Um, no, canines are not always German Shepherds. 
the police departments use beagles, they use labs, they use golden retrievers, they use malinois, they use mutts. Um, anything that any dog that has the tendency to be a, a, want, a working dog that has the drive to find things to to um like one thing that they look for in german shepherds and malinois and um, to work as canine police dogs is they don't let go they have that drive to play and play hard and that drive translates into uh, their working attitude. So if they're very playful, but they want that, they want that toy and they're not going to let go of that toy so easily. And if they have that drive to, to sniff out, you know, whatever, um, if they, if you throw, not even a ball, but if you throw something and, and, you know, go, go, go fetch that, you know, um, and if they don't give up until they found it, yes, likely they're going to be used if that's what they um okay okay this is a great great question all right for self a lot of these dogs their job is play it's not work um yes it's serious stuff and yes it might look like work to us because we know the seriousness behind it um but uh, there, it's it's a lot about play, the play drive, the the drive to um, like seek out, and you know they they want to play. Um, one thing that I've learned about Matters <laughs> is that he hated water, and so to get him used to water they would have a decoy on the other side of a stream or whatnot and he would have to get through the water to get to the decoy he wanted to get to the decoy he wanted to bite so he would have to go through the uh, water which is kind of clever but everything they do is play everything you know the trainer the handler will will take them out um and again their 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 training is play training it's not you know yes it's obedience obviously uh, and, um, you know, I'm sure when they, oh, the, the gentleman that is the handler here in Springfield, you know, I asked, Hey, you know, what does she do when she comes home? And he's like, well, she comes home. And the first thing she does is she will sit on the couch with my wife and she will completely ignore me. So, because she spends all her day with him. <laughs> so, so, you know, she just wants to relax when she gets home. Um, and I, you know, that's, that depends on the drive of the dog. So I'm going to now read. And, um, I think I did this last night, um, because of the, you know, the, the training or the commands are in a foreign language and for Akko, because he's a German shepherd from Germany, actually imported from Germany. And they will import some of these dogs from Germany and from Belgium and from Serbia um, the Mel and from Holland, there's a Dutch shepherd that they also use. It's He's more of a long furry uh, coated, I think, uh, German shepherd. Looks very German shepherd D, but um, he's just got long uh, fur instead of the shorter, coarser coat, coat of the German shepherd. So they trend, um, import these dogs and um, all their training has been in German. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it would take, it confused them. It would confuse them, take more time to retrain them to, you know, commands in English. And that's why they're all in German. Also, a lot of them are trained, uh, Schutzhund trained, or, um, I don't know what the Belgium Malinois, um, competition training is. Um, but the, Commands during those trainings and competitions are all in German. So that is what is up with those uh, commands. So I'm going to really quickly uh, um, sound out the uh, commands. And when you've got the book and when you're reading the book, uh, they're at the very beginning of the book, which should make it easier um, for you when you come across one of these commands. So... Um, the first one is pass auf, which is watch. Aus, 
which is uh, let it go or drop it. Bleib, which is stay. Bring, fetch, fuss, attack, which actually is funny because I I remember my dad playing around with, um, I think it was Akko. And Akko was not trained for aggression. He was not trained to attack or anything like that. You know, But my dad would go, just jokingly, he'd be like, fuss, and the dog would be like, um, yeah, okay, I'll just roll over onto my back and give you my belly, you know. But these dogs know what they're, you know, if they're trained, they know what they're doing. So fuss means attack. Fuss means heal. Keep loud means bark. Here is come. Hop is up or jump. Okay, so ready? Sit back. Sit back. If you guys have questions while I'm reading, pop them in. I'm going to skip around a little bit. I hope I find my spot. I think I will. I'm going to skip around a little bit because um, there are some sections I wanted to read. So, yay! So, if you joined me last night, you got to hear a little bit of this, but that's okay. I'll add a little bit today. Um, chapter one. The restaurant she had chosen to meet Jane at was just off the Boston Common. In, a brown, uh, in the Beacon Hill area of town. Brownstones lined both sides of the street. Dakota Taylor had called ahead last night, knowing that they would need a reservation at this popular restaurant. As soon as she stepped inside, the hostess, wearing a black tube skirt and light uh, gray ruffled blouse, greeted her with a genteel smile. Following her to the table, Dakota was involved by the clinking of uh, crystal glasses, the soft chamber music, and the low subdued voices of the other patrons enjoying an early dinner. Seated at the table with fine linen and crystal uh, water glasses, Dakota felt slightly out of place. This was not their normal dinner spot, but things had happened and Dakota had news to share with her best friend. Oh, by the way, spoiler alert, if you haven't read um, Ha! The first book, The Gift, plug your ears the first part here, okay? Just go na 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 um, A nervous flutter went through her stomach, and she pressed her left hand to it. A pearl ring adorned her ring finger, the reason she had asked Jane to meet her at this fancy place, the reason for her attention. Dakota spotted Jane's hair first. <laughs> okay, who loves Jane? See, let's, let's see a show of hands. Excuse me for a second. My voice is getting kind of crinkly. All righty. <clears throat> I love Jane. She's so funny, cute, and just, I want to just be her best friend. Um, her friend had gone from purple, a subdued, a more subdued, um, I'm sorry. Her friend had gone with purple, a more subdued color for her. Her best friend's individuality, individuality was one thing Dakota adored about her. Her outspoken, honest nature was another. When Jane spotted her, a huge smile lit her face. Then she slid into her, her seat opposite, the expression expectant, waiting. You do exist. Dakota grinned. Well, yes. Did you doubt it? Jane moved her, ba uh, her head back and forth. No but I expected you to be on the phone with me the second you returned from your adventure. There's a lot to tell. Dakota took a sip from her crystal water glass. Jane winked. And this is, this place is more upscale than we're used to. That, there was a lot to tell. The waitress delivered their dinner. Ha! <laughs> their dinner rolls in a woven basket covered with linen the same color as their tablecloth. The scent of yeast and garlic made J Dakota's stomach growl. Before both of us sit here, our stomachs growling like the hungry beasts we are, they are, let's dig in and then you can tell me all about what happened after Shane saw the light. I assume things well, went well and you are still speaking to him, with him, to him. To, uh, Jane reached for a roll. Dakota, reached with her left hand and heard a squeak. Jane stared as she pointed a trembling finger <laughs> at the ring. 
What is that? She whispered. Dakota kept her face expressionless, her finger absentmindedly, her finger absentmindedly touching the cool, smooth texture of the milky pearl surrounded by diamonds set in a 14 karat gold band. Oh, this? It's a hair, it's an heirloom. It belonged to Shane's great grandmother. Apparently, so he tells me, his great grandfather went diving for the pearl himself. Well, what is it doing on your left finger? Jane asked, her voice trembling a bit. So cute. Jane put it? I mean, sorry. Oh, my goodness. Shane, Jane, come on. Anna, why'd you do that? Shane put it there, Dakota answered. She feigned patience as if talking to a toddler. Jane pressed her lips and let out an explosive breath. Don't play games with me. <laughs> Dakota couldn't help but laugh, despite the tension that returned to her belly, and it wasn't hunger that put it there. She took another sip of water. I'm not ready for the thousand questions everyone is going to have. So that is, oh wait, no. Uh, in fact, she had been so not ready that she had removed the pearl ring. Uh, a pearl engagement ring after Shane had dropped her off at home the night before. She had been afraid her mother would see it and draw conclusions she wasn't ready to discuss with her. What can I say, Janie? It was an exceptional weekend, and uh, he, uh, Dakota panted slightly. He asked if I, if I would marry him. Eyes opened wide as, <laughs> as, as wide as they could. Yes, Jane's voice squeaked. I said yes. <laughs> okay, yes, she is such a drama queen. You're going to really love her in this book because she is really in her element a little bit. So I'm going to skip to Shane's part because we all know I am a fan of Shane. This is Shane's part at work. I love it. Oh, way to go. Don't do this. You're looking unusually smug today. Rookie Mason Carpenter settled into the passenger seat of the cruiser as Shane Donovan pulled out into rush hour. Their next hour would be spent sitting by the traffic of the um, by the side of the road, checking for traffic violations. Though a routine job, it didn't mean things couldn't get dicey, as he had experienced before. Cops had to be ready for anything on the job. Weekend go well? Shane nailed his rookie, with a look that had the ability to turn him into ashes. What makes you think? I want to tell you. <laughs> Those two. Such kids. Mason didn't take offense to the growled reply. Oh, come on, sir. Drop the act. You know I'm your favorite rookie. Don't go that far. <laughs> Shane dropped. See, I almost said Jane. Mm -mm. Note to self, when writing another book, do not have the main character's name so close. It's one of the no-nos that I obviously forgot. Shane worked his jaw as he tried to keep from um, smiling much too widely. Oh, things went well, Mason cheered like his own personal cheerleader. Yeah, well, she wasn't too excited about having to pretend to be my girlfriend. And when she found out I had something to do with her getting the job at the lab, she took offense to that. But the remarkable thing about the woman is she has the kindest heart and, the unca and an uncanny ability to forgive. What were you thinking, Shane? Mason tapped his palm to his forehead. It's all water under the bridge. How so? Shane eyed an SUV going just under the speed limit. When it passed, he exhaled slightly. He'd gotten severely injured during a routine traffic stop. Every time he sat on the side of the road, tension tightened the muscles around his neck and head. I considered what you said to me, rookie. She's a gift to me. And I asked her to forgive me, which she did. 
He caught the grin before it had time to spread. <clears throat> Mason turned bright golden eyes to him. Seriously? Porter here. <laughs> he raised his fist and waited for Shane to bump it. Giving a gruff huff, he did so. Inside, he was still smiling, still remembering the way Dakota fit against him so perfectly. That's great, Shane. Sir, see, I told you she likes you a lot. If you're going to ask her out officially, I mean, you two would be good together. Ah, she's cute and all. I thought I'd skip the whole dating part and go right to asking her to marry me. <laughs> Mason's gaze widened as he held his cup of coffee halfway to his lips. What? Well, I figured, uh, what do I have to lose, right? So I asked her to marry me. J uh, Mason gave a weak laugh. Will you be my best man since you insist, you're insisting that we're all besties for the rest of our lives and you're dating her best friend? Mason gave another tentative laugh as he finally lifted his cup to his lips. Oh, you're actually serious. The hot liquid must, must have scalded his throat because his voice was squeaky and his cheeks bright red. Yeah, why mess around? It's not like we're off to the preacher tonight. We'll wait until I'm done with my training. You're actually serious. Mason swallowed hard, making his Adam's apple bounce. It's okay to, wa to test the water before you submerge, you know. See, I'm not... I'm an all or nothing kind of guy. Shane popped the cruiser into gear and that person just ran a, uh, ran a red light. Announce us, rookie. Our audience attend, uh, awaits. Okay. Shoot. One moment, please. I have to find the next spot. So now... So now we have had the uh, honor of chatting with um, Mason and Shane. Um, now I want to introduce you to the dog that Shane goes to get. Oh, and the training usually lasts about, well, it depends on what they're training for, but Shane's lasts for 15 weeks, I think. Don't quote me on that. So this is... Uh, this is the fun part about getting the dog. She couldn't believe these dogs. They were all terrifying and amazing. These um, The guys are amazing. The guys, I, I'm going to uh, answer questions after I'm done reading. So keep popping them up. I haven't forgotten about you. Um, I just want to read for a little bit. She couldn't believe these dogs. They were all terrifying and amazing at the same time. Dakota took a sip of her iced latte and hooked her arm through Shane's. He was making notes on the pad, his attention riveted on the dogs doing, going through their motions. Any dog catch your attention? She asked. Shane flashed a grin. The fawn-colored Malinois f female over there and that big German shepherd. Her gaze slipped to the dogs he had mentioned. The Malinois was sleek and fast as she raced up an A-frame obstacle, a type obstacle, around it and then through a tunnel. The moment she was done with it, she reappeared at her handler's side. He re rewarded her with a tug on a toy, not a treat. The mostly black German Shepherd was impressive as, Mal as well. He worked his way through a set of what Shane called weaving poles with such speed he was a blur. Then he tackled a seesaw without hesitation when the heavier side went down. Dogs usually don't like that. I remember our golden. She was she was all right with it after, you know, to train it very carefully because that tipping is like, ah! <laughs> he was over a set of hurdles and by his handler's side in a flash, waiting to be praised. Intensive, she murmured. A tall man approached them, dressed in jeans and a t-shirt with a tattoo of a head of a grinning Malinois on his left bicycle. Bicycle! <laughs> I 
drive a motorcycle. <laughs> Okay, hold on. <sighs> a tall man approached them. <laughs> Give me a second. Give me a second. A tall man approached them dressed in... Yeah, I'm trying here. A tall man approached them dressed in jeans and a t-shirt with a tattoo of a head of a grinning malnoir. On his left bicep, peeking out from under the sleeve. I did it. Officer Donovan, I'm Brandon Sheffield, the owner. Thank you for coming down to check out our candidates. They shook hands and Shane introduced Dakota. You a dog person, ma'am? Heat rushed to her cheeks. Not, honestly, not at all. A frown puckered the man's forehead. You are in for a surprise then. She heard... She heard Shane suck in a lungful and gave the owner of the facility a smile. I'm sure I'm ready to learn all about them. Grunting, he nodded, then turned to Shane. What are you looking for? Dual purpose dog, sir. Ah, yes. That's a ton of work, but very rewarding. I have two dogs right here who might fit this perf that perfect per purpose. He pointed to a different Malinois and the big black German Shepherd Shane had singled out. Akko arrived from Germany two months ago. He's amazing. He's a year and a half and has passed uh, has the official Schutzhund Phase 1 certification. He received that in Germany. Since he came to us three months ago, we've been working on getting him to Phase 3. He's sharp, he's sharp as they come and a bit of a clown when not working. <laughs> not at all. Nah, you're not a clown. Brandon Sheffield snickered. Akko didn't hesitate when his trainer told him to go through the collapsed tunnel. He cocked his head and waited for the reward when he returned to the man's side. Do I, do I read some more? Hmm. Yeah, I can read a little bit more. Are you brave enough to put on the bait bite suit? Brandon grinned. Really? Shane looked like the sun had just come out. Are you for real? Put it on, see what he has. Dakota shut it inwardly, but he was here to find a dog that wasn't, wouldn't hesitate to protect him out there on the streets. Shane bent down to, piss the, <laughs> to kiss the hot top of her head. <laughs> wow. Keep my drink from spilling. With a cheeky grin, he passed his iced coffee to her. Be right back. There was definitely a swagger to his step. <sighs> her heart gave a tiny flip when he looked <laughs> over his shoulder at her. Handsome, sure, strong. She got to have a glimpse. <laughs> uh, she got to have a glimpse of the man he was. He was when he was working again. He had impressed her with being so focused and calm. Now he looked like a boy who had been handed his favorite toy. Okay, thank you for hanging in there with me. Oh, my gosh. Mm. That was pretty funny, actually. Bicycle. <laughs> I got it together. Right ho. Are there any questions? I'm just going through your comments. He's really cute. Argo is definitely... <laughs> am I for real? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm so sorry. What? I am for real. Um. So there. Uh, I can't read the whole thing. How long did it? I crack you up. I crack myself up. I'm so sorry about that. How long did it take me to write this story? Um, how long did it take me to write this story? So if you keep asking me questions, you may talk me into reading a little bit more. Shh. Um, 
how long did it take me to write this story? Honestly, it uh, I don't remember the first draft because that was written like four years ago or so. Second draft took about a month of rewriting the whole thing because the story was completely different. Trust me, it was completely different. So, uh, and because of some things that I added and some characters that I wanted to add, um, it totally changed. Um, can't even recognize the story from the one that I originally wrote. So about a month and a bit, maybe. You are welcome. Oh my gosh, bicycle part. Oh my gosh, these things always happen to me. <laughs> It is a very, very fun, 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 fun book. It's it's in it's intense. I'm reading the funny parts. Um, there's a lot of intense parts in it. Um, thank you, Di uh, thank you, Darlene. Um, so, if you have five more minutes, I will be willing to read Shane's part. You're welcome. These lives are the only way I can do things like this. I can't do a video because it would take me about nine years to put one video together because I'd want it perfect. This is why. Thank you, Lisa. It is a great book. It's a fun book. No. Book is book three is not written yet. It will be done. I read about 500 words today. Yes, I will read a little bit more. Anybody else want that? And no, book three, I, I'm going to try to finish, Diane, uh, the, the, book three, I'm going to try to finish by the end of the month. So I need a lot of prayers for that. Um, that will probably end this uh, series because... Uh, because I've got other things that I want to put out, but it may not. I mean, I may come to the end of the book uh, writing it. I may go, you know, I want more. Um, so I don't know yet. <laughs> but my plan is the third book is the last. So um, I also plan on having that out uh, beginning of the summer. Lots of prayers. Lots of prayers for that because it takes a long time to go through the editing process, the rewriting process, although this time it will not be so painful because I am not going to rewrite the whole book. I will change things, but it's so new in my head and I like my writing style now um, that I don't have to rewrite the whole thing. <laughs> okay, I, I do not want to kill anybody off in these books maybe okay shall we go i will i will read to you the bite soup part because that's kind of cool there's a lot of police action in this book a lot of dog action which was so much fun and again i am only a i can only do so much research i am not a handler i know about dog training um but i don't know as much as these dog uh, dog handlers do. I mean, they live with these dogs and they know them so well. And I mean, um, Mark was saying, oh, there's the head snap. And I'm like, oh, what, what, what? I mean, I was watching um, Mattis and he gave like a look to, Mar uh, to his handler and then he indicated on the back of the fridge and a handler can, any little tiny, tiny, tiny change in the behavior is the dog talking to the handler and that the handler has to know these they have to know their dogs or else this is life and death for them you know for either the dog or the handler the handler's job is to keep the dog out um alive out there and vice versa and these canine officers and their partners they get sent into a situation that are probably the most dangerous out there. They are not. Um, they they really, um, yeah. They really get. Tr they they really get 
trampled, I guess. You know, they, they go after the baddiest of the baddiest. Um, so let's see what uh, Shane's first encounter with Aqua is, okay? The bite suit was cumbersome to begin with. It smelled bad. It was hot. As soon as they approached Akko, Shane was pinged by two intense brown eyes that stared right at him without fear. The dog seemed to be grinning with his tongue lolling out of the side of his mouth. We're going to tease him a little bit to get a response out of him. Go ahead and approach him, then back off and approach him in a threatening manner. <laughs> yeah. As soon as Shane stepped near the dog, something happened. The lopsided grin disappeared. The dog became focused on him and him alone. A chill crawled up Shane's neck. Akko, Akko barked um, as he approached the hand, though, with a rubber stick. So if you've ever heard a German shepherd bark, wow. She bark okay, Ravy barks at us every morning because she gets excited and she's hungry. You know, the tummy needs to be fed. But her bark is like loud and it's penetrating and it's piercing. And I'm like, ow, oh, thank you. I'm awake now. Um, so yeah, they're bark and, and they are trained to sit in front of you and bark and bark and bark. And bark. That would intimidate me. Thank you very much. Hey, I'm talking to you. Shane shouted. Drool <laughs> flung through the air and landed on the handler's arm. Go on, run. Oh! <laughs> this would be me. Shane lumbered away <clears throat> as fast as he could, which was more like take like a fast walk. The suit prevented a sprint. Excuse me for a second. Mm. <clears throat> Stop! The handler yelled. Behind him, he could hear the dog barking up a storm. As the distance to his toy increased, I'm sending my dog. I'm sending my dog. Moments later, Shane was flipped over as the dog sunk his teeth into the um, bite suit arm. Sure, he was protected, mostly. But the bite force of over 200 pounds per square inch. Uh, but with a bite force of to over 200 pounds per square inch, he felt the teeth. Teeth. Teeth, teeth poking through the material of the suit. There would be bruising tomorrow. Then his own flight response set in. He fought the urge to shake the dog off and to try to run from the pressure on his arm. Akko's handler arrived and removed him with a hissed command. Aus. All righty. That's it. <laughs> um, hi there. Okay, hold on. Uh, I'm not going to kill anybody. Thank you, Alicia. I like doing them. Um, here we go. I can't wait to read the book. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, definitely. It definitely has a sidekick as an animal. And hi, Deborah. Thank you for joining us. Yay. Um, all right, guys. I'm going to head out because my voice is going, which I need it for my Instagram thing tonight. Yeah, I'm going to be on Instagram live, which should be very interesting. I've never done that before, so we'll see. Um, thank you. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. Um, I can I'll check later on, even if you come later to this. And like I said, you will be entered into a drawing of several door prizes thank you deborah it'll be fun it'll be interesting another um way to talk about this have a wonderful rest of the afternoon and thank you for joining me bye